Welcome everyone to episode 53 of the Phoenix Report. I am Jack Connor, and with me today is a uh, return guest, a guy who has not been on the show since episode 11. That was back in, uh, back, wow, almost three years ago. That was back in September of 2015. So a lot's been happening then. Uh, when he first reached out to me about being on the show, he was just getting started with his new band. And uh, since then, Bloodlines has... They, they, they've definitely been a regular uh, among the uh, Brevard County, Florida music scene uh, slash hardcore metal band. Um, I guess metalcore is m more the proper terminology, if I got that right. But Bloodlines has, uh, has, has been a band that, that my band has played with uh, you know, quite a few times, and they've certainly had their ups and downs uh, with, you know, with certain members coming in and out of the band. And so I know they have a big show coming up, uh, opening up for virtuoso guitarist Angel Vivaldi uh, very soon. So, uh, so this guy wanted to get back back with me again. So uh, please welcome back to the Phoenix Report, uh, the drummer for Bloodlines, John McGinnis. How you doing, Jack? Good man. Good to have you back. It's uh, it's it's been a minute, hasn't it? Yes, it's uh, been a minute. For sure. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, been quite a quite a roller coaster ride for us. The last like uh yeah so what almost three years so almost two and a half years three almost, years since yeah yeah it has been a while since you've been on the show obviously we've been talking since then and you know, yeah, yeah we talk yeah we a bunch we, of shows here like, and there yeah you know, yeah of course you know how that goes but uh I know originally you were gonna have your two guitar players Nick and Alex uh join uh join you tonight I know you know plans kind of changed at the last minute but you're still here and. and it's all good, so uh, so it's just sort of a return engagement for you. So I, I guess uh, you know I'm not not really sure where to start. I know a lot has been happening in the world of Bloodlines lately, especially since um, I think it was when you first got with me on the show here. You guys were about to play your first show, and mm -hmm. since then you've had um, your, your singer Austin Robinson has been out of the band and just recently is back in the band. And in, yeah. and in between, you had uh, our good friend Stephen James, uh, who was up until recently the singer for the band Dare Defy. He had uh, he had taken over for Austin, and um, I guess uh, I, I I guess just my my big uh, my big question is what's going on in the world of Bloodlines League? You know, I, I was just curious how how things have been going. Well, let me give you the breakdown on that. Well, originally, um, with the whole thing with Austin, we um. It was a uh, more of a um, a business thing in the band. Uh, we uh, we thought maybe there was um, a little issue with his attitude in some cases, and and a couple other things. Uh, not to dig in too much, but we all decided that maybe we were better off if we went a better a, diff a different direction in a singer. And uh, you know that's a big thing to do in some cases. You know, with a different singer. And and because that's how he, he was a, he was the original singer of the band. That's how sure. we how we formed, and we were kind of concerned about that. But you know, we had some people, uh, a couple of, like really good people audition. Um, first off, we had um we had a girl named Adrian. Um, can't remember her last name. She was the she was uh the keyboardist singer for Assimilate. Okay. And um she came out and uh she wowed us. I mean she um. Actually, when uh when she first uh when she bur first belched out and she startled Nick on the guitar, <laughs> mm -hmm. he's like, "Wow, you know that was amazing." And um, well, I, uh, I know you my... guys. I, not to interrupt here, but I I know that you guys have um, there was a time early on in the band I remember where my good friend Sarah Little was possibly playing around with the idea of being a second vocalist, doing more like clean vocals and. Uh, you know, she she hasn't really done too much in the way of performing. I know, you know. Uh, um, that that was actually more of a um, like maybe a guest thing on, on our recording. Okay, I, I, I was I to, like, you know, have her set in because I because I thought she had a really pretty voice and mm -hmm. um and I wanted her to um maybe uh, set in as the um the chorus in our um song Rising in the Night okay. and uh and uh we were working on that song actually and uh the recording we did I, I kind of pulled a death clock thing. I was like, no, delete. <laughs> We're gonna do it, all and uh, and we we kind of scratched that, and we started back to the back to the basis on recording again. The, the, yeah, because I do remember uh, her working with you in some capacity, and obviously a lot of your uh, recordings were sort of co-produced by uh, by her boyfriend Colin Morrison of Breathing Theory. Yeah, and um, so I wasn't sure if she was like planning on joining the band or if it was just a guest thing, as you mentioned. So. 
Um, that is interesting that you did bring in a uh, possible another uh, female vocalist there in Adrian. But you guys decided to go a different way and then brought Steven into the band. Yeah, um, and uh, well, actually we had we had another audition too that was really good. And a friend of mine named Billy Anthony. Okay. And, uh, he uh, he's, he's uh, he's big. He's big. He, he was this big bald black guy. He's gonna hey, I'm gonna say I'm calling him a big bald black guy, but he's a big <laughs> bald black guy. He came out and he was really awesome too, and he wowed us. And uh, Steven and Steven came out and uh, Steven did like this boom all this in one day. Like he kind of wowed us all, and it was just so much he did. He was you know he's a great singer. He's a great vocalist. And he's a working man, you know, and he works hard. And uh, so props to him for uh, stuff he does in his bands because he is a great vocalist, you know. And um, so we uh, we decided to have him join the, join the um, crew. And uh, we uh, played a couple shows and um, did that. But, uh, you know, he was really um, involved with Dare to Fi, and Dare to Fi was doing a bunch of stuff. And we uh, felt at the time that maybe uh, uh, he should be – focus more on dare to fly because maybe uh they might be uh doing something and um uh, you know of course they played the pod show and all that stuff going yeah. on and, um other things too and um uh, shoot um it just kind of didn't work out and then we had billy come in and uh we were having billy we didn't play a show with billy but um he got a job upgrade and like his his time span went from you know available to uh to nothing to like not very much and uh it was a hard moment it was hard moments for us and uh we, we were kind of running our tires in the mud just spinning we didn't know what to do and i kind of got the idea i was like you know i think you know maybe we should try to talk to austin again i brought it forward to the guys it's like what do you think about if we had austin come in and said well a lot of people might think that's kind of weird you know if we have austin come back into the band don't you think i said well you know yeah, you know, he did do some uh, crazy things online. I'm sure some of you guys heard that he, like, burned one of our T-shirts on uh, online. And I, I, rem- I remember seeing something like that, and I was thinking, like, wow, this did not end well. So, I, I mean, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I mean, obviously, you had some scheduling issues with the other guys and, you know, with Steven and all that. So, it wasn't like a falling out issue. It was just, you know, just the time didn't work out. But, um, yeah, I was going to ask how, how that went as far as um, – rebuilding that relationship yeah that's um i mean it was going it's going really well actually um i went invite austin out to one of the um practices i said man i called him up online um i, well, I messaged him online i said hey man i would really like to talk to you if you got if you would like to maybe talk to me you know just want to know how you're doing and stuff and touch base he's like okay you know yeah so he called me and um i talked to him I was like yeah you know um so me and the guy has kind of been talking, and uh, we would really like to uh, maybe uh, have you maybe possibly come back and uh, hang out, and um, maybe uh, join the band if you if you're interested. You know, offer that that all the branch out to you. You know, see if you know if maybe anything any wounds have healed and stuff. And uh, he's like, you know, he's like, I'm not gonna say no, but uh, we got some stuff to talk about though. Stuff. I'm like, of course, you know, of course, and. Uh, so Austin came out and uh, he just he hung out the first practice and uh, he just yeah you know, I said uh, at the end of the practice hey Austin we just get, grab that microphone on the PA there and just uh come on why don't you do one for old sake you know he's like I want to get winded as heck but I was like well why not just try it so he did it and I you know I kind of hooked him with that you know kind of hook line sinker almost and uh, I said you know I kind of bugged him for the next couple of days he's like what about it you know I mean you re- you, you want to come back and join the um, join us because we would we would love to have you come back so. Yeah, he did, and um, uh, after that, we just started practicing, 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 and uh, now we're at the point where we're ready to start playing shows. We got some new songs, we got new merch, and uh, we uh, because actually we just put a big merch order, all different colors, tank tops, hats, and all kinds of stuff. And new, we have a new logo. Uh, we're uh, we're working on getting scrims for the show, a big you know side scrims for the speakers and stuff. And uh, we're doing a lot of things, and uh, we've been busy since Austin's been back. And since Austin's been back, that feels like that positivity, like the the, the drive to keep going and uh, keep and keep things alive. Because at one point there, man, I was really like, uh, with all these singer stuff, man, it was like I was lost. And like that's like I, back there where I kind of got came to that point where I didn't wait, didn't know what to say there for a second. I was like, yeah, because I would, well, what's going on there? You know, we were lost. I was like, I was really thinking about maybe shutting the band down, actually, at one point, because I was like, wow, man, I think maybe we're, I'm, at, I'm at the lowest of the low right now, and I feel like that maybe this is run its course. 
And I really talked to Alex and I talked to Nick. I said, told him how I felt. And I talked to Dave and Colin and Corey from Breeding Theory. I talked to a lot of people about that, man. I was like, you know, this is how I feel. And this is, you know, I feel like the band's run its course. He's like, you know, you know, talk to your bandmates, tell them how you feel. And, and uh, you know, you really need to, you really need to find out, you know. So we had a couple practices and uh, I brought it up to him. I said, look, guys, you know, I'm really just not, not, not sure if you guys feel this anymore. Do you guys feel it still? And uh, this is, like, actually, like, right before we got Austin, actually. I was, like, you know, I was really in the slum. And it's, like, should we call Austin see if maybe we get that drive back? Because maybe since Austin was left the band, we kind of did this roller coaster effect. We had our highs, and we went down, and we went up and down. And uh, But when Austin was in the band, we kind of we, we kind of constantly kind of go up and down, more ups than down. So we decided, and that's when we decided maybe give Austin a call. Maybe we, maybe we get back on that, you know, that peak and start riding up towards uh, where we were going at. And uh, so we were really happy with where we were going. And, you know, now we're ready to play that Angel Vivaldi show. We're practicing our new song. Uh, actually, our new song is called uh, Emery Lane. And uh, people, uh, I tell people, ask me why it's called Emery, not Memory Lane. I was like, Emory, E-M-O-R-Y, is actually my old street I lived on. Oh, really? And there's, and there's a street, and, a, and on that, you know, on that, in that house on that street, I had a little drum beat that I kind of do in this song, and I actually do that and, um, in the song. So I say, I'm going to call it Emory Lane because this is just like something I made up back in, the, back in my old house. I'm going to call it Emory Lane. And he was like, you know, like, oh, that's cool. You know, we're, we're going to incorporate all kinds of cool songs and you know, stuff with that. You know, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Plus just, it has just, that it has that personal meaning to you, so that, that yeah, you know, it's, it it kind of makes it creates a little story behind the name of the song too, you know. And that's always cool. To, I always say I wanted to tell people that, you know, about you know some of our names and songs because sometimes you have uh, people have stupid songs like stupid names. Like me and Dave, uh, we had a, um, a song in our old band until death. We were um, called Burn Until Death. We called it a uh, Burn uh, Beef Juggernaut. <laughs> yeah because we because we were just at home so what are we gonna call this song it's like i had a box of um chef order d and it was like beef stroganoff we're gonna call this song beef stroganoff tonight you know that sounds, <laughs> that sounds like something dave would come up with <laughs> yeah i mean yeah me and dave both were like we were just cooking in the kitchen we're, we're gonna call that song beef stroganoff I'm like yeah that's funny <laughs> and we, get, and we i can picture him getting all wide-eyed like yeah man let's do it <laughs> yeah yeah we stuck with that but yeah you know it's always cool to have some meaning to your some of your stuff you're doing and our, our new music is, I'm really happy with, since we've had that talk about, you know, since I said, uh, oh, man, you know, I'm not feeling no more. And I, and I really told Alex and Nick, and this is how I feel. You know, we need to do something because I'm really lost. And, you know, we got that drive back. You know, we got Austin back, started getting that drive back. And we're writing new music. And the new stuff that we're writing is really good. Really, it's a lot different from what we, we were doing kind of thinking out of the box and as i've been telling the guys in the band i was like we need to think you know a little more different because at one point we were kind of like you know i feel like we're, we're we're getting repetitive in some of the songs we're writing and some of the stuff keeps on like sounding the same and uh we gotta we gotta really uh focus and uh try to rebuild ourselves and rebuild our image and rebuild our sound and uh really find out what bloodlines is going to come back as this uh this is like our comeback show kind yeah, of we're gonna come yeah. back we're going to show you guys that um uh, what we're what we're doing, and uh, we want to come back with a you know a merch table full of stuff for you guys, and new songs, and new uh, new looks. And, you know, I mean, I don't know about you know new looks, but because you know, I'm I'm just, I'm still the same ugly guy you're gonna see on the behind the drum set. So, but uh, you know, it's so far it's all the same guys in the band. But um, we're um, we're actually uh, we're, we got uh, we got Dave playing bass for us right now, just temporary because uh, we we have we're still on the search for the bass player, but Dave's always been like our um, bass player kind of behind the scenes yeah you know? yeah I, I know he's i know he played a few shows with you guys in the past but yeah so dave's like playing this show with us but dave's always been like he has you know breeding theory that's his main that's his main egg but um and um if we're over like short and we're still looking for a bass player which we we are actually still looking for a bass player at the time but um Dave is our like our our always go-to guy he's always around dave's like my brother so dave's filling in for the show but, um, yeah, we're ready to rock and roll for this Angel Vivaldi show. We are so excited to come out and show you guys what we are going to do and, uh, and all the new all the new material and uh, the new logos and uh, all that good stuff. You know, we're going to be um, really excited to do this. For sure. Is this your first show with Austin back in the band? 
Yes, actually, it is. Okay. Yes, okay. it is. This, uh, you this know, will it, be the show. Yeah. You know, I'm hearing what you're saying, and a lot of things come to mind, especially with with my own experience with my band, Vertebraker. There have been times, uh, you know, I I would say about once a year where we kind of have that that talk that 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 you that you guys did, where we feel like, especially if we're in like a down period and not playing a lot of shows, like we're, you know, every year I want to say we get together the five of us and just kind of talk and be like, hey, you know, you guys are you guys are all still enjoying this, right? Like, and, and we'll just kind of talk to each other, see where everyone's head is at and just be like, you know, like we're, we're, we all still get along with each other. We all still right. yeah. Yeah, like the you, music you, we're doing. You still dig what we're doing, right? I mean, yeah. we're still. We're, I, I think, I think it's important to have that, have those conversations sometimes, you know, even if things are going well, just to, just to kind of see where everyone's at and just. Be, and, like, and the big thing is too, like um, the big thing is too, in your, in your band that we have, you know, a lot of time we were having a problem with at the time. I feel like, and I was, I felt like I was part of the guy doing this too. I would accidentally cut people off in their conversations. And like, you know, they're trying to explain something. Oh yeah. I, I, you're like, no, shut up, John. Let me explain. I'm like, yeah, my bad, my bad, you know, and I'm better at that now too. So, you know, I, you know that's helping the attitude in the band. I'm not cutting people off no more. <laughs> I'll, I'll yeah, take that blame. Let everyone have their peace. But, you know, the you know, uh, to talk talk to your bandmates, man, that is the best way. And us, uh, and since we have been more open to each other, and like you know how this is how I feel, guys, or hey, man, you know your practice was good, but you know I'm really not feeling this. You know, it's we're taking it more as a business, trying to be more of a business aspect of it. You know, it's a friendship too, but you know it's a business thing too. You know, at the same time, because you know you're trying to. You're trying to sell. They're trying to sell your name, you know. Sell your sell your songs and uh, you know, sell a couple of t-shirts, you know, make some gas money. But at the same time, I'm trying to have some fun and yeah. uh, and I'm trying to entertain these people and you know, do all this. I'm not trying to get like a profit off people really, yeah, but I'm no, just more in the sense like you're getting work done. Man, I, yeah, I enjoy people coming out, you know, and chaining and uh, you know, doing all that stuff. You know, it's it's really exciting when you get people, you know, back behind you, like, yeah, man, you guys are just, you know, you guys just tore it up tonight. Thank you for coming out and you know, playing here tonight. Yeah, that's that that's what it's all about to me. You know, it's not about how many shirts we sell or anything like that. But at the same time, I want to go out and have the band be best represented and, and we want to be able to sound the best and look the best and, and play the best we can so right now like i said we're we're practicing uh like you know as much as we can and we're getting like today we must have played our our whole set about five times you know just to make sure it was dug in and you know everything's fine my legs felt like noodles afterwards you know <laughs> and it's like nick had a massive headache and uh and alex had alex actually had some uh, family stuff he had going on he had to talk to his dad about some family stuff mm-hmm. so you know that he couldn't make it, but Nick had like this massive headache today after we had band practice. I guess it's just you know pumping it out, and it was really hot too. We work in a we practice in a little metal uh, uh, unit over off of Vier Boulevard, off mm-hmm. of uh, by Richard's Paint. Sure. Yeah, that's where we practice at in a little metal garage. So we sweat it out, and I and I uh, you know we went to, we practiced at my house for a while. Actually, I wanted to save some money and not have a practice spot. Mm-hmm. We went to my house, you know, we had AC. It had all this stuff, but then I felt like we were too spoiled because oh the TV was in the living room, and uh, this too and many uh, distractions. We, oh, 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 you had you had a toilet right next to you. You know, we better go use the bathroom now before you come to our practice spot because you're going to be here for a while. You know, get it out. You know, right. your drinks, bring your thing. But now we're at the practice spot. It's more focused. I I feel like you know we're here, and there's less distractions. We're in we're back in where we started at. You know, in the same the same practice area, not the same unit. I wish we had. I wish I get the same unit, but the same uh on the same row actually. Believe it or not, <laughs> but um uh, yeah, we kind of I kind of went back to basics with the band after we had that talk about maybe I was wanting to um quit um shut down the band. I said, well, we're gonna go back to the old practice spot where we started at, where we sweated bullets and we wrote all these songs at. I said, I want to go back to basics and uh really start the band and uh kind of start it back over and the recordings. We're going. We're going to redo everything. We're, uh, we were redid guitars, everything, and uh, during the time, you know, we were, we were looking for a, a singer too, but uh, we didn't want to record any singers until we had a singer that was for sure in the band and uh, positive. And uh, so th- we went that route <laughs> for a while, and uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get nothing out in time for this show. But we're working on our, um, our EP right now with three songs. Okay. Okay, I you know I am curious about a couple things. 
going back to what you said, you know, obviously having that meeting, you know, with everyone and just kind of talking about it. And now with Austin being back in the picture and resolving whatever issues that were there before, um, there anything that you guys are like, have made a decision to do differently than before? Well, um, the, the one, the one big thing that really had the effect was, uh, at the, you know, back when he was first in the band, he didn't really have a job. He didn't have a car, and he he was really re- relying on us to do a lot of things, you know. And you know that that takes a lot out in the in a band to to for somebody else to rely on you to to take you here, take you there, or get a ride here, get a ride there, and uh, pay for you to do this or something like that. But now Austin, you know, like you know what, a year or so later since he left the band, he's done some growing up. He has a job. He has, you know, he's with this this girl of his, and uh, they are a cute little couple, you know. I mean, they're they're they are they've been going strong. They're living together. They're, they're he's really happy in life right now. So that's when I thought, you know, look at him. Uh, he he looks a lot happier. Looks a little more grown up in life. Maybe you know, maybe we should talk to him. You know, maybe we should bring him back into picture and see maybe what happens. And uh, sure enough, you know, we and uh, he came back and we're we feel like. You know, soon as soon as we had those first couple practices with him, we could feel that that energy building. Like we're recharging the battery of the band right now. We could feel him like charging us up. It, we were getting hyped about it. You know, like oh yeah, uh, yeah. You know, every time Austin's uh, coming to practice now, he's getting a little. He's getting back into swing of things. He's getting a little bit better. You know, because he has. A, he says, dude, honestly, I have not. He said to me, I have not seen since I left the band. You know, since we, since you guys let me out of band, I have not seen or sung or screamed nothing. So it's going to take me a while. So well, no worries. You know, we're on hiatus kind of anyways. But you know, you know, we were doing we were doing we were posting videos of us practicing. You know, photos of us doing things. And you know, me messing with Glenn, and, uh, waking up doing a Slayer wake up on him. That's when I get I get my drum and I go out there. Dun, 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 you know, I wake him up. And, uh, you know, we were doing things to try to let us know we were still out there. We were still messing around. We were still active. But uh, we were on hiatus, though, kind of. But now it's, uh, hey, you know, we're we're coming back. We're coming back full force. We're coming back with Angel Vivaldi. Uh, yeah. You know, we got tickets for sale right now for that. And uh, they're $15 a piece. And, uh, you know, people are, people are grabbing them. And uh, left and right, and we're almost out of tickets. So you know, who knows? We might hit the promoter up for more tickets here soon. That's, so that's a good to, problem to have. That, that's always a good. That's always a good thing. So yeah, uh, yeah, we're we're really excited about this show because we're gonna bring it to we're gonna bring it this time, and we're gonna bring it the way that it's, you know you guys have never seen Bloodlines before. Very cool, man. Uh, yeah, now now for those of you who don't know, Angel Vivaldi is sort of like one of the latest sort of hotshot instrumental guitar players. Uh, really, really a big up and coming uh, instrumental guitarist. And d- does do his songs have any vocals in it? I'm not. Sh- I'm not sure. Is it just mainly no, instrumental no. stuff? Nope. The guitar does all the singing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, yeah, he's definitely one of the fastest rising stars in the uh, instrumental guitar world. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, you know, when I, when we first played with him, um, uh, I didn't really know who he was. I heard of him and I checked him out and I was like, yeah, well, I really dig his stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, ever since we played with him, I kept an eye out on him and see what he's done. He's came to town, uh, once, um, I think, uh, a year or so ago he came and, uh, the show was big, blew up. You know, I think it was a sold out show, I think last time. And, um, this time he's coming back, you know, and his hype is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Every time I check his, he's always got videos coming out, new videos, new songs, He's uh he's very active right now too, so I'm very happy to come back as a as a comeback show with this artist and uh at a big show and uh, we're gonna have the house packed and uh we're gonna show everybody what's all what's all going on and we're we're hopefully hopefully we hopefully we're gonna impress Angel Angel himself you know hopefully. Very cool, man. And, and what what date is the, is this show gonna be? And it's at, it's June 28th on a Thursday night at the Haven Lounge in Winter Park, which is in just Park. outside of Orlando. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. It, it's, it, it's a great bar. I mean, that's a great place to go. It have. is. It really is. It has a great stage, great sound crew, and uh, the owner is such a nice lady. Yeah. And I mean, I, I I believe she's a lady, right? Miss Haven, right? Is that her yeah, name? Maria. Maria. 
Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I I met her a couple times. I couldn't remember her name, but I just know her as Miss Haven. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody, this, yeah. this is Haven, you know. I'm like, okay, but she is she is a gem. And uh, sure. And you have Axel uh, running the sound up there. He he's a great guy, great promoter. And, yeah, they're, and great they're sound all, guy. all people there. I've never we never had like any issues at the, at Haven. It's always great shows at Haven. We love it there. I mean, it's impressive that you're moving that many tickets, especially for a Thursday night show. It's uh, not easy to do, but uh, yeah, I mean. Good. Definitely could. Well, it is summertime, so it is summertime. That that too, yeah. No, that that is yep. true. You know, a lot, a lot of the college kids are just hanging out and stuff, like, trying to get. Some, I'm. I have one friend hit me up. He's like, I need like four tickets. I'm like, yeah, cool. All right, you all know, right. you know like, that's not bad. And I have another friend. I need three. I need. I need. I need four. I need. I need five. I'm like, damn, dude. Are, <laughs> Calm are, people, down. are people able to purchase this online on like Ticketfly.com? Uh, I don't know, but there's actually some VIP. There's a VIP experience. He is oh. Angel. Angel's been posted on his Facebook page. If you go on okay. his Facebook, on Angel Vivaldi's Facebook page, there's some VIP experience that he is doing, like a Q and A and a small guitar oh, like uh, kind of thing. Yeah, uh, thing. And uh, cool. I thought I thought that'd be awesome myself to check out. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe I can be able to check it out. Just kind of, you know, you know, I'll be I mean, there. I mean, you're already, you're already there. You're already at the show. You know, why not? Yeah, who knows? I mean, that'd be kind, that'd be kind of cool. But uh, you know, just to sit back and watch what he does, and um, uh, and uh, get here. Um, I don't know nothing about guitar. I'm not I'm a drummer, you know. Right. So, <laughs> but, like, uh, I don't even play guitar, but I'd love to take a lesson. So why not? <laughs> yeah, but a, a couple of things we have, uh, we have, um, I've done. Um, you know, I've always had this Chrome drum set, and um, I was kind of. I was kind of thought, man, I'm, I need something different, so I need a new drum set. And uh, you know, I was looking around online. I wanted something new, and I said, like, man, it's so expensive, and I really don't have the funds right now to buy a new drum set. So I got the wild hair, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna paint my drums. I'm gonna customize them myself. What a great idea, John. That's a, that's a genius idea, John. So I uh, took all my lug nuts off my uh, drums, all the hardware, stripped them down to bare drums, and I and here's a chrome drum set I had. So I had to prime it, and I painted it white. And then I took uh, uh, red paint, like blood splatter, and I splattered my drums in blood splatter. That's perfect. So, so now, so now, and I, and I always wanted to do that, you know. And I looked up online that um, some of the um, drums that I saw, it was a three-piece set for like you know thirty-two hundred dollars for a, a drum set, and uh, I was like, wow, that's too much that's for a three pieces. And I'm like, damn. So I said, I can paint this thing for less than that. So I painted it, and I came out with this awesome blood splatter drum set, and I. My wife bought me um, some new drum heads for it. They were red, uh, these red, um, red hydraulic drum heads, something like that. Um, Evans Hydraulic Series, but um, they're red. And so it's like I got like my red drum heads. They made like pool of blood, and I'm splattering all the drums. It's really cool now. I was like, it blood lines. It kind of works out, you know. So yeah, yeah. I was like, you know, I'm really proud of that. So y'all can come out. And you get to see my cool blood splattered drum set now. There you, you know? go. There you go. So, <laughs> That's another reason for people to get out there and see uh, see John and Bloodline, see them do their thing. Um, you know, now what? Now after this, I know you guys have planned on a few things. You got your EP coming out. Yeah. Um, what's What's next for Bloodlines? Any Any other particular things that you guys have your eye on, or uh, even if you don't have any other shows booked uh, yet as of as of now, uh, is there anything that you guys want to do in particular, or that you're working towards at the moment? Honestly, my my big goal with the band right now, I think we all kind of talked about this. Uh, sometime uh, we want to keep, well, we want to keep doing shows and uh, start playing shows around here, play all the local shows we can, and start being in the scene again. But the big goal we want to do is do a small tour uh, around maybe like the end of the year or maybe the beginning of the year after we get, after we get our feet back underneath us playing shows and everything, get everything uh, rolling around again. And um, we need to get a we need to get a good trailer too, like an enclosed trailer, and um, stuff like that. And uh, so the big my big goal is I want to take us up on maybe like a little, little tour. We want to go up to Ohio. I want to go up to Ohio with wow. with, uh, with the guys from uh, um with uh the old drummer from uh, Breathing Theory, um, Kagan. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, he's up there. He, he lives up there with his band. Um, K, um what's I can't remember the name. Excuse I, me, I, I keep, keep, song. key enemy or something. Key enemy or something. Excuse me, yeah. I was saying wrong. If it's wrong, I'm sorry, Kagan. But um. Um, but yeah, I would love to go up there and do some shows with them and then work my way back down the coastline or something like that and come back to Florida. And, uh, I would love to go up there and try to, you know, do something like that, um, in the next, like, uh, end of the year or something like that, beginning of the year, depending what, um, depending what happens, you know, who knows? For sure. For sure, man. That's ambitious. That's my goal right now. And and plus, and plus we want to release a full length too. 
that's one thing we talked about is releasing a full length album with everything we got. And uh, because we actually and we have a couple new songs that you know that uh, we that aren't, aren't going to be you know of course on the EP, but we do have. Um, uh, let's see here. We do have we have a, a one newer song on there called Legacy. That's that's going to be on the EP, and we have Rising in the Night, and then we're going to have uh, what was the other one? Shoot, <laughs> Rising, Legacy, and Dark Passenger is the other one we're going to have on there. So yeah, those are the three that's going to be on on our EP, and you go. Know, it's it's coming out soon. We're going. We're, uh, we're waiting for Austin just to. Uh, he he's ready to record, but we just haven't uh we haven't had time working around. He was moving and uh, a couple months ago, and I was moving a couple months ago, and uh, we could uh, we we're trying to finish up some of the stuff in the studio. And uh Nick and uh Nick and Alex were uh, uh Alex lives out in Orlando right now, so he he commutes to, uh, from Orlando here to uh Vieira Rockledge to uh, practice and stuff like that. So <laughs> you know, kudos to him for that drive. Yeah, you know, that's, I, that's commitment, you know. I know how that goes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, I mean, me and Dave used to drive out to Orlando for our band practices a long time ago. I'm I'm a committed guy, you know. When I'm in I'm in a band, I I would rather stick to one band. I'd re- I don't know if I like to go off and do two bands because I've had I had offer from Bo to join Murderfly uh, a while ago, and um, I came out and I checked him out, you know, and uh, I just like I didn't really uh, want to quit my band because it was kind of like my little egg I was sitting on. Yeah, and uh, you know, I th- I think they were looking for somebody who was really more committed to um, one band, and I was kind of more committed to one band. I didn't want to quit my uh, quit my uh, little my yeah. get off my egg. I was waiting for it to hatch. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that would have been cool. I mean, I don't even know if Murderfly is doing anything right now. I think uh, I don't know if they're done or what. But oh, uh, yeah. Actually, I I saw uh, Bo post a a post of some of the old pictures of, of them. And I was like, man, you guys playing shows again? It's like, oh, we're on hiatus. I'm like, and uh, couple, I saw a couple of people chime in and say, like, oh yeah, it should be this, 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 the so and so mechanism, Bernie Figure Verona, uh, Copper Bones, and and uh, all these other all these other bands uh, on there. And I was, I, I was like, this this should be the set, um, the lineup, Chris Marsh and uh, and, Chris, and Chris Marsh comments. You know, I would let everybody know if that ever happens. Trust me, you guys would be the first ones to know if I ever get. So that ever happens so who knows you know i would love to be on that bill as well you know shoot put bloodline yeah. on that you know we'll yeah, absolutely tear it up with we'll tear it up with murderfly out there we would you love. guys would you guys would fit right in with those bands for 100 oh, yeah. percent. yeah so yeah no I'm, I'm excited that you guys are back doing your thing you've you've regrouped and you know kind of been through it and um you know i'm definitely proud of you guys because like i remember when you came first came on the show talk talking about, hey, I got this new band together, you know, I'm not sure if it's going to work out or not, but let me give it a shot, and here we are, almost three years later, you guys are still out there, you know, doing your thing, come overcame a lot of, uh, a lot of the different problems, and you're still get, getting out there and making, making a name for yourself, so I'm proud of you guys to see, yeah, uh, I mean, it, it was a hard, uh, it was a hard restart, you know, I mean, kind of, because, like I said, because, uh, we, we had a lot of stuff go on in between, um, when were the singer things and yeah. everything else, and and I uh, I got involved with the the skate park. I don't know, remember the skate park stuff I was doing. That that's right, that's right. Um, yeah, uh, no, a while back, a while back. For those of you who don't know, John was in the process of rehabbing this old skate park. I think was it in Vieira or Merritt um, Island. Merritt Island. Yeah, yeah. Merritt, right behind the mall. The old uh, uh it was uh, it was like the it was the Merritt Island um like uh. It's the Bavard, Bavard BMX and skate and paintball, is what it's called now. It's right behind um, um, the the mall there. It's the, you know a lot of people know it. You know like a lot of the older people and some of the, some of the young kids still still know it's out there. But uh, yeah, you may drive by it every day, but they have paintball and airsoft out there. You know it's, it's mostly known for that right now. But uh, a lot of kids still go out there and still skateboard. And uh, one day I was doing a delivery in the apartments back behind the skate park, and I just. I was like, man, I haven't drove back behind these apartments uh, to these apartments in a long time, and I got have a scene in the back of the skate park in a long time. I wonder what it looks like. And I'm turning my head, I'm looking around, and I see like some grass growing here, and all these ramps looking like a wood, some wood laying around. I'm like, man, I was like, this really kind of like bums me. And I was like, I'm, I was like, you know, I have me a couple, me and a couple friends, we uh, we go on, ride, on my motorcycle and we go and ride every uh, Sunday. I said, dude, next Sunday I want to stop in and see if I can uh, offer a, offer a hand. 
So me and my friend Troy uh, Mortensen uh, rolled up and um, got off our bikes, and I walked in there. I said, "Hey, man," and he was like, uh, "My name's John," and uh, and it, it was, his name was Mike. And uh, I was like, "I, w- I want to uh, try to help, you know, maybe rehash the skate park and help make it a little bit safer and clean up and do this and that, you know." And uh, Mike told me, Michael told me he's like, you know. You're more than welcome, man. You know, I, I ain't going gonna, to ain't gonna, ain't gonna BS to you, but uh, I have a lot of people come up here before and say they're going to do something and uh, never show up. I'm like, I said, oh, I'm different, man. I'm different. I'm going to prove you wrong. So I said, you might if I go out and take some videos and some and some pictures. So I went out there, took some videos and pictures, and uh, I started uh, posting online. I said, man, you know, I know some of you guys remember this place. And I started tagging some of my friends, and I did in the video and stuff, and then all of a sudden, it started, like, getting all these shares, and, like, all of a sudden, it was at, like, 400 shares all of a sudden. I'm like, holy crap. And, like, and, like I had, like, all these comments. I have, like, 600 comments, and, like, you know, get, and they were building more and more, and all these people were commenting and sharing and tagging their friends, and, like, yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh, you know, what did I do? I opened I, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. a can of worms. I mean, people still remember this place. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start a little website called Bring Back with Art Skate. Yes. And I, so I, I, I formed a, a, a volunteer group called Bring Back With Our Skate. And that was me. I, I started it. And uh, I got a guy named Chuck Redman and uh, John Suzer, uh came out. And, uh, you know, some people some people know him. He's a big help for a guy. And uh, me, me and these two guys and uh, my friend Rod, another guy named Rod, uh, Rudy came out and helped too. Some good guys out there. And we started clearing out. We started rebuilding ramps, fixing. Uh, started getting, get, I started hustling donations. I said I needed wood, screws, paint, anything people could bring me. I would use it out here. Uh, we started to go fund me. The the park started to go fund me thing for it. We had a donation box aside. We raised a lot of money. We did a lot of work, and I never accepted a dime from that. I, and uh, uh, the guy, the, uh, the owner, the, uh, the owner would offer me drinks, and I would take. Yeah, I would take his drinks. You know, what I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you know, he he always offered me this. You know, I said no, I'm not taking nothing, man. This is all goodwill stuff. You know, what I mean, this is this is a uh, good karma. I'm, I believe in good karma. So, so I, you know, I did that for I did that. You know, I actually was more focused on that one time than the band. And yes. that's, that's 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 one other another um, little up and down that we kind of in the band that slowed slowed the band down. I was out there every day after work doing stuff on my days off, putting in 12 hours out there doing stuff. Yeah. Uh, at one point, I was out there at three o'clock in the morning doing stuff, you know, with yeah. these guys, you know, building ramps and stuff. It was cool, and I really enjoyed it because that was my old skate park. I rode my bike out there. I, yeah. I was a BMXer, and uh, I rode out there, and uh, I met a lot of friends, and I had I met a lot of good friends out there. And I was when I started going back out there, I I met I was still meeting friends. I was still meeting mm-hmm. some of these cool kids and some of these kids out there on these scooters, man, doing some crazy stuff. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, you can always you can always check out the um, Facebook page that bring back with our skate. We were doing that out there, um, but uh, yeah, right now we're, we we might bring, we might bring that back and do some more work here. You know who knows? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I got to commend you on that, man. That's a really cool thing. I know it's a, I know it was a labor of love for you for a long time, and uh, you know not only you know doing something that you know you you know a place that meant a lot to you personally but you're also giving back to the community which i think is a really cool thing volunteering your time and your effort for all that and um how how are things at the skate park now is it or is, is there still a lot of work to be done well i mean uh the, the owners told me that you know it's the kids just aren't skating as much as they used to you know it's just not that popular of a sport you know a lot of kids yeah. aren't you know really yeah and they have all these they have a lot of free parks now you know i mean all these uh, uh open uh public parks and stuff you know city parks but uh they're all made of concrete and stuff like that but bikers can't uh, bmx people can't really ride in those parks because uh they won't allow them and stuff like that this park is made out of wood it's all it's as they call it or organic and the guy who made um tim payne he is actually uh he, he designed ramps for x games and stuff he designed oh, this wow. here you know this is an awesome park we had out we have out here and uh, i would love i would love for people to go back and remember what it, what it's like we have an indoor outdoor we have there's a vert a six foot half pipe there's all kinds of stuff you know, and we, we we rebuilt it we built a new um fly box out there for that place one night they had a lock-in and all these kids come out there and they, they lock them in for the night. You know, they close the gates like everybody can sleep over. They can sleep in the inside on the ramps and stuff with their sleeping bags. And uh, the owner stays out there and he keeps an eye on them and stuff, of course, you know, and the responsibility and stuff. It has to be happening. <laughs> but, uh, 
but yeah, and uh, I, we were out there finished up one of the ramps one night. And one of the most joyful things I think I had was when the kid I got to go inside and when the kids were skating inside the, the, the inside area when we were finishing up the ramp, I got to tell them it was done. And I must have had like all these like about you know 30 kids. I was dodging them as bobbing and weaving as they were running past me to go check out the new ramp. And that was <laughs> so cool, man. I was so happy. Actually, I had I had video posted on the website. Me, these kids are jumping over me. As I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm laying on the ramp. The kids are just jumping way over me on their bikes, on their skateboards, on their scooters, just flying right over me because it was a good ramp we built. And uh, and uh, I was really proud of that, you know. And that gave me a lot of joy. It was good to bring back something for the community and make it safe for the kids. That was my main concern, making it safe. And uh, that's yeah. what I wanted to do. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're st- I, you know, I still see that as a possibility of coming back and doing something. You know, you know I need to go hustle my uh, – get the flow hustling and maybe get some donations back and see what we can happen. Who knows, you know? Maybe uh, maybe there might be a benefit concert in the works for that. But, yeah, I mean, I, I did mention that. Um, I did mention that. That could be something I could do to help uh, – do something, you know. I, you know, a long time ago, there used to be concerts out there. A long time ago, and uh, like I remember, like when I was a kid, seeing uh, uh, a guy named uh, um, Cameron's old band um, from Per Perfectly Three, and uh, you know, a bunch of other old bands out there uh, playing at the skate park a long time ago. And it was a blast, and they had you know big events out there. And uh, one thing I would love to challenge this to some bands: uh, they have the paintball fields out there, right? I think like maybe maybe once a year we should hold, we should hold an event and we get a bunch of a bunch of the bands like from I like, get Breathing Theory you know get Bloodlines get Vertebraker get Lydia Can't Breathe get all the get all the get all the cool guys from the you know get the guys from Murderfly get all the bands let's have a paintball match you know and eliminate <laughs> each other and, uh, and I love and, it you know let's have a paintball match and eliminate each I other love it. And, I'm in. And, and let's and, and you know at the winner gets a nice little fancy trophy and bragging rights for the until <laughs> next year you know what I mean. I love it, man. Count me in. That, that would you be know, I would love that, right? You know, I, and I put that out there. So anybody who hears that, let's do this. Let's let's have let's have a um, let's have a um, bands paintball match over at the Mariano's at the Mariano paintball field. <laughs> it's like a tournament. <laughs> yeah, I love it. tournament. I'm down for that. I know. You know. I love it. I went out there and played for my cousin, uh, my not cousin, my nephew's uh, birthday. Man, I was sore the next day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ain't, ain't what I used to be. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, me, and my, me and my wife did that on a vacation thing one time. That was, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man. So th- this is awesome, man. I'm so glad to see you, you and the guys back up and running. Uh, again, you know, uh, before we close out, I know uh, Thursday, June 28th is is the show at the Haven. It's you guys, Angel Vivaldi. Um, what, what are the what are some of the other bands that are on the the bill that night? I know uh, one of the bands. Uh, one of the bands is uh, touring with Angel is uh, the Day of Reckoning. Okay. And I checked them out online, and they were pretty cool, man. They were pretty heavy. I uh, um, I checked them out, and uh, ooh, I don't know how to say this. H y v m i n e. Hard mic. I don't know. There's Jupiter. I think Jupiter Groove is the other band. That's local band Jupiter Groove, I believe it says here. And uh, it says uh, a a r a k a r a. Aracara, Aracara, is that how you say it? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've heard and, of that band before. Yeah, and they're and they're, they're they're I think they're the other local band that's playing too. So All there's right. there's Angel and there's two touring bands and then there's there's us three locals. There you go. So, that's six, so six bands. You know, for fifteen bucks, that's a steal right there. Right. That's that, yeah. That, and, that's and, a good and, deal. And I tell you what, when uh, when I saw Angel. If you check him out on YouTube or pull up any of his songs on you know Spotify or whatever you guys you know whatever you do, uh, you hear you hear how he sounds. He sounds exactly the same live. It is amazing, and uh, he he puts on one heck of a show. He gets you guys involved, you know, gets the crowd involved. He's he's a very good guy, and uh, he's you know and he he'll, he'll come up and let you take pictures, and he'll meet you, hang out, talk to you. He's very humble, very nice guy. Very cool. And he, is he have a full band with him or? Uh... Oh yeah, full band. Yeah. Nice, nice. That's yeah, actually, awesome. uh, I remember the bass player came out at one point with his uh, with his uh, double neck bass. Wow, it was actually right. yeah, like a five string and a four string on it. It was weird. Nice. It was, uh, or, or he had more, and he had all kinds of. They had the bass player had all kinds of cool basses and stuff. You know, an instrumental band like that, you know, you're gonna have some cool stuff. You know. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Awesome, man, John. Thank you, thank you so much for coming on and uh, just keeping us updated on what 
everything that's happening in the world of bloodlines i'm uh, i'm excited for you guys um you know I'm, I'm excited for your show and for all the other stuff you have coming up and uh hope to see you on the paintball field one of these days right uh the one thing i'd like to leave you guys with is uh tell you guys you know bloodlines is coming back with a big big way and we're going to come back we're going to show you guys what we're all about with new material we have a new new sound kind of going on with us we have when you guys, uh, who, if you've been to our shows, you remember somehow of our some of our older songs. Our new songs are way different, and okay. we're coming back. We're coming back big. We're coming back in a better way, and we're hoping that you guys are going to really enjoy this this time. And uh, and we're we're really excited about it. We're re- we're really excited. So we hope you guys are going to really love this. Like I said, we got new material, uh, new material, new merch, all kinds of stuff, and we're we're ready to come back and uh. You know, hopefully, hopefully, you know, we'll play some shows here soon. You know, coming up, you never know, right? Yeah, yeah, you never know. Where can where can the folks find uh, Bloodlines online on social media? Uh, Facebook, Instagram. Um, pretty sure um, that's. I don't have Instagram myself, so and I think we have Twitter too. So um, uh, check that out over there. Um, I um, you can check us out uh, blood uh, blood slash lines. You know. And uh, you can go there, uh, find us that way. Uh, three, two, one band. I think it's Blood Slash Line. Three, two, one band. Something like that. I, I'm not exactly sure. Nick, our guitar player, he is like the you know the the savvy you know name. He knows it all by off the top of his tongue. Well, no worries. I will definitely post the links in the description. John, Appreciate thank you. So, <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks once again to John McGinnis of Bloodlines coming back uh, once again on the show after almost three years sort of catching everyone up to speed what he's been up to what bloodlines has been up to in the last couple years you know just with losing their singer and gaining him back and all that all that they're doing i'm really excited that these guys are out there and uh, make sure you catch them if you're in the area on thursday june 28th at the haven in winter park they'll be opening up for angel vivaldi as as we mentioned before and also joining them will be day of reckoning hive mind Arakara and uh, Jupiter Groove, so it should be a great show. Looking forward to the return of Bloodlines, and uh, and also check out Bring Back Brevard Skate on Facebook. That's uh, that's sort of John's pet project to rehabilitate the uh, the skate park in uh, Merritt Island, Florida, in Brevard County. So if you're in the area, definitely check that out. Make sure you support those guys any way you can. Uh, really a cool way for them to give back to the community. As far as upcoming events, uh, not only is Bloodlines playing the Haven, but Vertebreaker is playing there as well. I think the week before their show, on Friday, June 22nd, we will be there along with Auditory Armory, who is doing a special set of covers. We will be there along with uh, you know my good friends and Cruel Curses. Obviously, you heard Brian uh, in the in the previous episode. Yeah, he's the drummer for Cruel Curses, and uh, he and I go way back, as you know. And, uh, and also Grim Ghost will be there uh, playing one of their first shows ever. So it should be a really exciting night. So that is it for this episode of the Phoenix Report. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at JackedXConnor. Like me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Music. Feel free to check out my band at facebook.com slash band. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, make sure you email me at jackconnorpodcast at gmail.com or tweet me with the hashtag Phoenix Report. If you're listening to this on YouTube or iTunes, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, leave a high rating, go back and listen to all the other episodes. Thanks once again for uh, for listening. This has been the Phoenix Report. I am Jack Connor, and uh, I'll see you later.